clean the light, riding, but I know that they ain't. Ride or die. I go hard in the paint, yeah, homie, I'm a saint. Ride or die. All right. Well, welcome to tonight's fight, everybody, between Biff the Charlatan Sanders and Johnny Hollywood Haas for the Bible Belt Champion of the <laughs> Why would you introduce me as the Charlatan? Why don't you let them make up their own minds? Let you make up your own minds, folks. Tonight's fight is going to be for one fall. Oh, I lost my train of thought. So, James, will we go over the rules with the audience? All righty, there'll be uh, two-minute opening statements from both uh, competitors. No interruptions during opening statements. Then there'll be a 10-minute question and answer round, which each person will get uh, 10 minutes to ask the other one questions. And that time, you have to answer the questions. You can't just um, interrupt. So, And I will kind of redirect if need be, then 30 minutes of uh, back and forth dialogue after that, which I will only interrupt if people get uncivil. All right, Johnny, are you ready? Yes, Johnny will be the first for opening statement. Yeah, sure. All right, Johnny, your time has started now. Okay, well, I think we're all here to uh, not only just hear some of the opposition from my side, but also to hear what uh, this person that identifies as a faith healer has to show and also has to prove. Now, we've all heard of the faith healers for years. We see them on TV. We started seeing them back in the 80s. Uh, it became popular then, and it's still somewhat popular now. The, uh, the issue I have with the faith healers is that many of them, including my opponent today, claims to be a Christian and claims that he can talk to the deceased. He claims that he can heal people and do all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. And that is what I take issue with. That's what I find fault with. Um, there's one thing that I've found to be in common with all the alleged faith healers, whether it's this individual or the people like Benny Hinn that you see on TV, there is not one medically verified uh, faith healing that has ever occurred. And matter of fact, Costi Hinn, which is the nephew of famous Benny Hinn that claims to be a faith healer, in an interview that he gave with Pastor Justin Peters, he said that he spent most of his young life in the ministry with his uncle. And although there were many claims, seconds. That, although that there were many claims of healings, he specifically stated that he had not witnessed one verified healing whatsoever. And I do not believe that Biff Saunders can verify one either. And that is my challenge. All righty. Uh, I'm resetting the time. Biff, you have equal time, two minutes, uninterrupted. Let me know when you're ready and I'll start the time. Ready. All righty, go. For starters. For starters, I don't talk to the other side. I am a sensitive. They let me know that they are there. I relay to others that their loved ones are there. As far as uh, proof, <laughs> all you got to do is go to my timeline, find the people who had cancers, had injuries, had PTSD, and hit them up. They are now friends on my Facebook page. So do your own research. As far as it medically being done, I'll save you a lot of time. I'll give you authorization to go into my records and find out that I snapped the ligaments in my ankle when my ankle was snapped in half. And the doctors told me that my ligaments were flopping in the gutter and that there is no time that they could heal on their own, that I would need cadaver parts or some kind of a natural synthetic made parts. When the MRI was done and it was time for surgery, it looked like the three stooges looking at each other back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I'm like, what's it going to be, docs? Is it going to be the Godiva part or the synthetic? They went back to looking like the three stooges looking at each other. And finally, one spoke up. Um, Mr. Saunders, there is uh, no sign of there ever being any damage on your ankle. The damage is all gone. There is no damage to be detected. That is a miracle in my own medical records. How much time I got left? You got uh, in two seconds, 30 seconds left. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come.
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All righty. Two minutes just stopped. So now uh, this next opportunity will be Johnny will have 10 minutes to ask you questions. He can ask yes and no questions or longer questions. And then it'll be your time to to ask Johnny 10 minutes worth of questions. Uh, Johnny, are you ready? Yes. All righty. You may begin. Biff, you, uh, you stated that it's not that you talk to the other side you just let other people know that the other side is there with you is that correct oh hold on i gotta unmute him hold on he's muted he's got his mic muted. go ahead go ahead biff uh biff this will be when you ask you answer the questions all right um while he's saying i have my mic muted, yeah. can you hear me now yes all right um the other side gives me an electrical impulse to let me know that they are there yeah, and when they do, when I look in somebody's eyes or look at them and they want me to let them know that they're there, I relay to let them know somebody is with them and I'd be sure to let them know that I don't like to play connecting the dots. And unless the person gives me a heart uh, pain quick, or a quick, head quick, pain. Quick pause, quick pause for one second. So in, in this round, um, Johnny's just going to ask you questions. If you could try to answer just the specific question and then during your question portion, You'll be able to elaborate as you ask them questions and in the back and forth. All right. Uh, John, well, go on. Uh, Biff, I'm not really interested in so much in what you personally think. I'm more interested in whether or not what you're saying is lined up with Scripture. And uh, I can find nowhere in Scripture that a person uh, is able to uh, have any sort of contact or premonition whatsoever from those that are deceased if you could show me a place in scripture where you could uh substantiate what you're saying i would like to see it keep looking so you you, you don't have a place off the top of your head i mean do you have even a ballpark no god talks to me directly uh literally you appear to when i when i get my uh, words from him it's directly, not from the book. But he did tell me to, to read the book again and do not judge him. After judging him, the first time I read it and I closed it. So he told me years later, try reading my book again. This time, do not well, I judge didn't answer me. my question. And he still, I didn't answer my question. Well, you, you just said to look. Right, you so, really didn't answer my question. Ne- uh, I'll go on to another question. Would, um, you stated just moments ago that God talks to you. Now, do you believe that God is giving you revelation that is actually not found in scripture or is it uh, revelation that is uh, that, that comports to what scripture already teaches uh, both so you you're saying then that god is giving you revelation that is not found in scripture well the reason why i'm going to challenge that is because in scripture it says no, I, said to... both. I said okay both. well i'm going to challenge one of, i'm going to challenge one of the things that you said uh, scripture does teach that uh, the Bible is not to be added to. And if you're saying that you're getting revelation that is not in Scripture, then how do you reconcile that with what Scripture actually teaches not to do? I reconcile that with God as a living God. And therefore, because he's a living God and he says, others will come after me that will do greater works than I, that he is working for me and that because he's the living God and he is not dead, that he is still performing his works in his name through others that believe him and follow him. So if we're getting, if you are getting revelation that you're conveying on to uh, then to others, if you are getting new revelation from God that an individual cannot find in scripture, then are you saying that the Bible is not completed? Um, I am saying that there are currently still scribes that take notes for the Father. You do what so you will with Bible, that information. Is the Bible completed or not? I guess uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament is. If the Father still has scribes 
taking notes for him and archangels have scribes taking notes for them, then I guess the books are still being written in heaven as we speak. There, there, is the Bible complete, yes or no? Oh, that Bible is, yes. That book is done. Okay, well, that, that same book says not to add to it. If you're talking about We're getting not adding new revelation. To it. We're not adding to that book. Like I said, that, that volume is done. That book is done. We're not fifth, adding to it. Fifth, fifth, if you're talking about getting new revelation that is not found in Scripture, then you're actually adding to what God said. And that, mm -hmm. too, is not found Ooh. in Scripture. Actually, to the contrary, it says not to add to what has already been revealed through Genesis and Revelation. So there you are biblically inaccurate. Uh, Biff, I would also like to ask, in a previous conversation you and I had, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but did you state that you witnessed... Five minutes left, Johnny. Did you state that you witnessed Jesus at the foot of your bed? Yes, I did. Okay, well, in Scripture, it teaches not to be deceived by those that claim they have seen Jesus. It actually goes further to say... If they do say Jesus is here or there, not to believe them. Now, my question is, Mr. Saunders, if this is what Scripture is teaching me not to believe, why should I believe you? Well, you don't have to. Well, I realize that that would be a choice. But based on Scripture, who should I believe? What Scripture teaches or what you're saying? Um, well, the problem lies is that all of the scriptures are not in the bible you do realize that correct that's not what i asked you all right well you make your this is why we have freedom of choice you make your own decision well you can believe that you saw jesus that's i'm not really so much disputing that i'm more disputing the uh the issue that it does not line up with scripture scripture teaches to not believe people that say what you just said. And if you're a Christian, uh, I find it uh, very troublesome that you would uh, pretty much look at the Bible and dismiss it altogether by telling someone like me, well, the Bible doesn't really mean what it says. I should believe you instead. Right. What verse, what verse does it say that? I, I don't have the verse off the top of my head, but it is because a fact. I have a photographic memory. I have photographic it, memory, and I don't recall that anywhere. It, it is a fact that Scripture does teach that. I'm sure Taylor uh, would probably know the Scripture off the top of his head, but it does teach that. If anyone says, here's Jesus, where there he is, it says, do not believe them. You can look that up. It's easy to find. Uh, it is exactly in Scripture. But that is a deflection of what I just said, and I think you actually do know that that is in Scripture because it has been pointed out to you several times. Um, Biff, I, I have a, how much more time do I got, Gibson? Uh, you have uh, four minutes, and then Biff will get his 10 minutes to ask you any series of questions. Okay, so Taylor just verified that what I said is in Scripture. Thank you, Taylor. Uh, Biff, uh, recently I watched a video of you you were at some sort of meeting and you were talking to this individual, you were asking him questions and he claimed to have been healed from, I think it was pancreatic cancer. Is that correct? Correct. One well, of many. Well, study shows that those with pancreatic cancer, only about uh, 7%, I think it was 7% uh, survive with that cancer for, I think, a few years, and only 2% survive past 10 years. So that is a very, very minimal amount of people that uh, can survive after 10 years, but yet it is still a terminal disease. How did you go about healing them, and how did you know he had pancreatic cancer to begin with? He called me up for a roof job, and uh, when I got there and I went in, I can see that he was a... Uh, off a little with medical things in his house and we're talking to him and I asked him about what was going on with him and he told me that he had a uh, pancreatic cancer and this is where it comes uh, fun because now I have to explain to people that I'm blessed with the gift of healing and offer it to them. Some accept, some look at you like you're crazy and some say well I have nothing to lose. He said go ahead. I took hold of his hand, the gift fired off 
He no longer has pancreatic cancer. He put a testimony up on my Facebook page. You can literally contact him and ask him for all his medical records if he wishes to release them to you. Well, I'm, I'm asking he, how you knew that he had pancreatic cancer other than he, just based on what he said. Is there any other means I, to verify that? Well, who am I to call him a liar when I went to his house? And who am I? Uh, if he's I going to publicly, he publicly announced and his wife said that he had it. And uh, his friend said that he had it. So do you think that this guy made up that he had pancreatic cancer? And then I don't know. Just, so that's how you verified it? Because you just have faith that he was telling you the truth? If you're looking for verification, go for my own snap tendons. I will happily let you uh, sign any release form for you to find out that my snapped ligaments are no longer snapped or any sign of damage, which is impossible. And a miracle. Well, in, in other words, based on what he told you, he said he had pancreatic cancer. <clears throat> You're just taking his word for it, but there was no verification that he could prove that he had pancreatic cancer. Biff, I can tell you right now I have a perforated stomach. Uh, are you just going to accept that without me trying to prove that to you? I'm not, I'm not going to call you a liar, but you do realize that there are hundreds of videos on my timeline, correct? Okay. So, in other words, you would not be able to really know unless I could uh, prove it medically that I just have a perforated Ask him to send you the documentation. Well, I'm, I'm sure not talking to him right it. now. I'm talking to you. Uh, so, that, those are some things that I find. Uh, Oops, I, I sorry. Find uh, it is time. I muted my mic. I was saying time, and I'm like, they're ignoring me. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, yep, yeah, time. Um, yep, your turn. Biff, you'll get to start your 10 minutes uh, when you're ready. Just tell me and I'll start it. And you can ask Johnny any questions for the next 10 minutes. I'm ready. All righty. Go. All right. My, my, my uh, response is to the audience. I have no questions for Johnny. He's on a mission. He can do his mission. Um, um, Read. Uh, we have a, a viewer that's in the middle here. Uh, read Matthew 24, 24 to me. You, um, Uploaded. I'd like to hear what it actually says. Who, who found it and has it there? Who found it? Taylor. Taylor. On Matthew 24. Taylor, read, read Matthew 24, 24, 24 quickly, please. There are many false Christs will come into the world and fool the very elect if possible. Okay. Great no words in there did I hear. If anybody right. finds the part where it says that. Don't believe anybody that said that they see me, they're lying. I want to hear that part. All right, so you find that particular part. I'll That's go back to talking. Thing. For those of you the same chapter. For those for those of you that are, what's same. that? If they say the Messiah come in the West, give not heed. For there will be they will come out into the world. Many false Christ will perform many signs and false miracles. Well, he didn't come out, he didn't come out of the West. He stood at the foot of my bed. All right. So <laughs> we'll move on to um he uh, wants to pick on one of uh I stopped counting after a thousand miracles. The person that he picked on, his name is David Knapp, K-N-A-P-P. -P. You can find him giving a video testimony on my, if you go to videos so you don't have to scroll through years of timelines and stuff, just watch one video and it will connect you to other videos that you can watch all these healing testimonies from people in their world. Um, the ones that are really miraculous, well, they're all miraculous. Um, removing of attachments, uh, demons, exorcisms. I have uh, dozens of photos that I can't release because they're kept to me in confidentiality and privateness. But as far as hundreds of videos, you can watch them, scroll through them. They now, are not Biff, most um, of them are uh, friends on my timeline. It, it, is, it is fine. I don't if you believe 10 minutes went by yet, did it? No, as you say, it's fine if you want to do a statement, but you are able to ask. Right, I, got, I, got, I, have no, I have no questions for a non-believer. I'm just going to state my okay. piece. Thank you. All, All right. right. Now, I'm, I'm going to do like they do on TV. Can I get my time back that I just lost? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I actually hit pause on that for you, Biff. Go right, on. That, th thank you very much. All right. So there are hundreds of testimonies. I even set up at large fairs. This year in Connecticut, I set up at the Durham Fair, where we did in front of everybody who passed by. Strangers would stop in, and there was at least 75 to 100 combinations between healings and removing of attachments, where you could find a lady that walked in there that couldn't move her arm, 
and uh, she had rotator, rotator cup surgery done. It was bone on bone. She walked in there, couldn't move her arm. And before we were done, she walked out swinging her arm around, smiling and uh, acknowledging the miracle that just took place. Amazing stuff. How many minutes we got left there? Uh, you have only used uh, three minutes and 20 seconds. You've got three minutes uh, and 20 seconds. Right. Yeah. So for the, for the non-believers, you know, hey, more power to you. For the Christians that attack Christians, that's uh, what it says in the Bible in Revelation time that will happen at the end. You know, brother will attack father, father, brother, blah, 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 blah. They will all be attacking each other. Jesus not only appeared at the foot of my bed, he didn't show me his face. I wasn't sure if it was the front side or the back side, but he showed me where he was evidently where he was scourged on his right rear side because I saw blood there. Another time that he made his presence known to me was then a, a very crude, pencil-drawn face appeared at the side of my bed. I looked at it, and I looked up to heaven, and I'm like, if this is you, why would you choose this face? And I looked down, and I'm like, if this is you, you can just get the heck out of here. It changed like a kaleidoscope, went right back to that same face. I repeated myself, if this is you, God, why would you choose this image? Because I didn't recognize it. And if it's a devil, get off. This happened three times. Later that day, I saw a sign came up that said, uh, Bible study. Ironically, I don't think I've ever been to a Bible, Bible study in my life before that day. So I went to it for ha because I finally started listening to my gift of discernment. So I went to the Bible study and they rolled out a mini shroud of Turin. Lo and behold, the face of Christ that was on the shroud of Turin was what was applied three times to the wall next to my face. Another time Jesus appeared in my dream on the cross. But the cross was leaning to the side as he was leaning over to me with his arm pulled out of the fight, reaching for me to help pull me up as I felt him on me trying to pull me down into the depths. And when I tried to reach the hands and pull them out, I could feel them crumbling under my hand and breaking. And I felt bad for the hands crunching. And uh, and I should have had, he had a little faith. I should have reached out and grabbed his hand, but I was afraid I was going to pull him towards me. Silly me. Should have just reached forward and Grab his hand and four and a half me. minutes left. All right. Um, I, while the Holy Spirit descended down upon me in December 2005, um, everything became euphoric. It was so loving, it was miraculous. I was all my senses heightened a hundred times fold. I was able to smell the pollutants in the air, feel the energy out of power lines. When I walked on the place for me, um, <laughs> sparks came out of it like there was 12 welders up there. I called the police department in Thomaston, Connecticut. This would be in the month of December 2005. The police came out, took a report, came to me and said, Mr. Saunders, we were going to charge you with filing a false police report. But we talked to the neighbors and they said everything that you said was through. The sparks were coming out like they couldn't believe, like a, like a river flow. And then there was a loud explosion like a stick of dynamite. But nobody lost their power. This makes absolutely no sense, Mr. Sony. But we're not going to write you up for a false police report because everybody here has seen it. How many minutes we got left? How many minutes we got left? So you have, so you have uh, you're at 640 right now, so three minutes and 20 seconds. Three minutes, 20 seconds. So for, for the non-believers, all I simply say is go to my timeline. Look at the videos. If you want to cross-reference it, reach out to the people and say, are you kidding me? Is this real? How can you prove that you had an injury beforehand? Do you have medical records? I don't challenge these people. It's not me to judge them. I witnessed a guy that I met in the gym that uh, was scrunching in pain. I went up to him and said, what's going on? He lifted up a shirt, showed me how a dump truck rolled on him, and he lost two-thirds of all of his muscles and rotator cuff. Laid hands on him. He started working out with me. Next thing you know, he's slapping around. 200 pounds like it's nothing. Then he went and started working out with other people. He called me up, said, I hurt my shoulder. I said, the one I laid hands on? He says, no, the good one. How miraculous is that? One third shoulder held up better than the full shoulder that wasn't injured. Miraculous stuff. Um, how much time we got? You have two minutes. All right. So with this here, I'm going to simply say relax. Listen to my voice. If you click off or can't take my voice or it sounds annoying to you, maybe you need to check yourself. 
Um, I'm simply going to say the Lord's Prayer. Pay attention to your body with what you're feeling because the demons do not like my voice. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. One of my buddies on uh, Facebook's name is uh, Wayne Ober, O-B-E-R. He was a critic just like Johnny Host. And for years, he uh, picked on me so much that he was like, you know what, I can't take your shit, your garbage anymore. And he unfriended me on Facebook. And then we were at a camping site where he couldn't move his head, could not move his neck, and he saw me smile out of the corner of my eye. And he's like, okay, Biff, do your thing. And uh, what a testimony from a non-believer with some awesome stuff. Now, he couldn't move his neck, couldn't tweak it to the left at all. Now he's like, I'm sorry for not believing you. I'm sorry for always attacking you and unfriending you. This is miraculous stuff. And uh, many of my friends... 30 seconds, Biff. Many of my friends who are non-believers are non-believers. Again, if you want to find out if the stuff is real, if you want to test it, don't attack me. Simply go to my Facebook page and ask those who have been healed in his name through me. I am just a conduit. God bless you all. All right, you got 10 seconds. This is not a test. This is real deep down the rabbit hole miraculous. All righty. So now that the question and answer period is over, we can uh, move to general conversation and you guys can just engage and talk with each other. The only time I'll get involved is if uh, someone starts cutting off the other one or if it gets disrespectful. Yeah, well, I can tell how we can put, a, put an end to this doubt right here and now. Uh, a few days ago, Biff was doing a live video with a gentleman that was laying in bed in a vegetative uh, uh, state. He was not talking. He was just sort of staring off in a can of, in a, in a can of uh, uh look about him. And Biff laid his hands on him. I counted, I think it was about five minutes. Of course, there was still no change. But we could put a, we could put a stop to all doubt if Biff, after laying hands on this individual, if he would upload a video of this guy that he laid hands on that is now walking around and talking and normal, that would put a doubt to, uh, or excuse me, that would put an end to all doubts. Biff, will you upload this video tonight, sir? The video was uploaded, and you only watched five minutes of two hours of it. Did I hear you correctly? Uh, yes, I did watch five minutes. So you watched five minutes of two hours. I suggest you watch the whole two hours and get okay. back. Okay, well, is he normal now, Beth? Can we see it? He is better than he was, yes. Is he normal? Is he up walking around and talking? Beth? You healed the man, um, he right? Is, did you just talk? Did you slightly you. heal him, or did you fully heal him? It's not me. It's God. Okay, Why Biff. Would you get mad? Through, Why would you uh, okay, get mad I'll play your game. Through you, Biff, did you just slightly heal the man or did you fully heal the man? God gave him feeling in his face, which he did not have before. So, so God there's only a slight healing. You asked the question. Can I answer the question or no? Go ahead. God gave him feeling in his face, which he didn't have before. God gave him feeling in his leg where he was able to feel that he had a pick in there which I wasn't aware of or nor when I was the psychic medium. God gave him feeling in his uh, fingertips. God also gave him finger in his pecker, but the uh, person who was um, talking for him actually um, wanted the film to be stopped before she said that because she thought it was inappropriate. And can he get up and make his own sandwich, Biff? He can talk to you if you would like to talk to him. I'm talking to you. Can he, You were there. Can, you, can he get up and make his own sandwich? So you're attacking me for watching five minutes of a two-hour I'm just video. asking you if he can. Can you see God? Biff, please answer the question. No, he's not making P, P B, and J. Okay, so in other words, the healing was only, what would you say, slightly healed? You'd have to ask God. I'm asking you. You were there. You witnessed it. You observed it. Right. But God does what needs to be done. I do not so, question God's will. 
So rather than people, I know you feel offended when people call you a charlatan. Would it be better if people called you a slight healer rather than a full on faith healer? Well, the guy no longer has pancreatic cancer, so I would call that a full healing. You call it a full healing, even though he cannot get up and make his own sandwich. He's been laid in a catatonic, in a catatonic phase for 17 years. Okay. Would that be a problem for Jesus? Uh, Jesus appeared, actually, while we were doing it, but you well, didn't bother. Please answer the bother, question. You, well, what was the question? All I heard was would Jesus. The, would that be a problem for Jesus to kill somebody, no matter how long they've been in this state? I have no idea. Of course you don't. You guys can ask him questions now. Uh, Biff. So what was what was the point when you when you were talking about the Bible? Are you saying that the, the Bible could be errant? No. Yeah, you, you, you know what encyclopedias are, yes, right? All right. So they come in volumes, correct? Yes, they do. So volume one of an encyclopedia would be the Old Testament, yes. correct? Volume two would be the New Testament, correct? All right. Do not interfere with either of them volumes. Do not mess with God's okay. word, right? Volume three is being written as we speak in the heavens. We are not touching volume one. We are not touching volume two. We are in a whole, we are in, we are literally in end of times. We are in, you know, end of times, literally. If I were to point to Galatians 1.8, where it says, if any man bring you another gospel, be it an angel from heaven, let that man be accursed. If I look at 1 John chapter 1, verse 8, it says the same thing. If anyone bring you a new book and you wish that book Godspeed, you are a partaker. I'm not bringing them a new book. I'm not bringing the new book. He's writing the new book. What part of that don't you understand? I'm not writing. I'm not taking the notes. Who's writing the new book? God. Where does that say that in scripture? Um, actually, uh, I believe his name was uh, Zachariah. Zachariah has been taking notes for the father now for 800 years. His apprenticeship time was 200 years. So you're saying even though we have Genesis through Revelation, God is still writing new words and he's just delivering to you? If God is God, no, I'm sure he's not just delivering it to me. You think I'm his only messenger on this earth? Fifth Galatians 1 8 says so there's an angel from heaven were to bring down a new gospel. Let it be a curse. All right. An angel is not bringing down a new gospel, God will give it to you directly. Why do these people need to go through you? If they have faith in Jesus Christ, why do they need you? Can't they just pray to to, to God himself for healing? Why, 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 why do you need to be there? Um, I would say because I have so much faith that I would uh, break through any doubt or any hindrance or any problems that they might have. So well, because that requires I, them to have faith, not, what time not you. Five to nine. Okay. It would require them to have faith, Ben. So you're saying... You, because you have so much more faith than they do, you can kind of uh, act as their, uh, like their consigliere. You can speak on their behalf, and God will grant you a request because your faith is greater than theirs. Is that what you're saying? Are you able to connect to the other side by somebody's voice or no? You are. All right, cool. So as you're listening to this guy's voice, let me know what comes through for you. <laughs> if they don't have enough faith, if they don't have enough faith in Jesus Christ to heal them, but you're saying they all they need to have is enough faith in you, right? No, I did not say that. I said I have the faith for both of us. So you can heal them even though they don't have faith to be healed through Jesus Christ alone. Yes, I have laid hands on people who are atheists, non-believers that walk all sorts of different paths in His name. I have healed them, healed them in His name, all different okay. paths, non well, non-believers. I, I well, I don't believe you. That's fine. I didn't. I'm not, I'm not asking you to. That's why I didn't ask you any questions. <laughs> Would you consider yourself a mediator between you and Jesus Christ? Would I consider myself a mediator between him? 
No, I, I, yes. I, just, do, I just do his works, not a mediator between. So, well, you, you're pretending to be a mediator. If someone has to go through you to, to, to be healed and they can't go through Jesus Christ and you're positioning yourself as the mediator, right? No, they don't have to go through me. They have many other choices. But when they hear his good works in my name, they reach out for me because they are seeing the works that are real. Uh, would you consider yourself one who practices omens? You give one that, predictions. One that, one that practices what? Omens, as you did with me that day. Um, my eyes are literally looked through from the heavens. So, so is I that do, a yes? No, it's not. It's not me. I don't. I don't. I haven't got a clue what I'm looking at. So when you send me a photo, I enlarge the photo, and things come out at it. And God is literally looking through my eyes at it. And there will be writings. There will be different things that I am praying at. God knows what to be done. I do have what's called a gift of discernment. So sometimes I, I just about to touch my spirit. I have a gift of discernment that allows me at times to know what is happening to help me with these uh, gifts and work. Well, now, before you said that you read my forehead and you believed that something was telling you that I was not going to be here very much longer yeah, on this earth. I, is, I, my, my, my gift of discernment told you that uh, you really need that, to, you, that you, you, well, you, 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 you might well, not be That would be, be an you. omen. That that's would be not, an omen. Well, that, that's that, that's uh, called discernment. You know what discernment is? Yes, understanding. Uh, where did you get this from? Evidently God. Evidently. Uh can you show that somehow other than just this is what Biff says? But so discernment is a word in the Bible. I'm not talking about that. You say you got this sort of uh, revelation from God. How? How? Probably through traumas. Who knows? So in other words, you talked to God and uh, you were able to read my forehead and God gave you the reading to convey to me, right? Why do you, he doesn't believe that we can do these things because he's going to the Bible and the Bible is telling us that these things are impossible? Well, I guess you can answer that. I well, did have one question, Biff. Um, your friend who's there with you, she is a Wiccan as well, so she does not believe that Jesus Christ is God. Are you Wiccan or not? Excuse me, no, I'm not Wiccan, I believe in God wholeheartedly. I'm extremely spiritual. Are you the person from the video that was with the gentleman the other day who said she was Wiccan, or is that another person? That's another person. Okay, my apologies. Okay. So the other person who said that she was uh, Wiccan, um, how do you heal with a Wiccan if your belief systems are that completely different? Um, simply because she still believes in God and she believes in Mother Mary and she has a strong connection with Mother Mary. So when I sent her the Lord's Prayer and had her listen to it three times, Mother Mary came through for her, took her halo off of her head and placed it upon her head. And she broke down and wept like a baby. Is she a medium? Um, yes, she is. Well, scripture teaches to avoid mediums. And why, and why is that? chapter 11. Well, because... Because uh, God completely said that that is what uh, we are not supposed to entertain ourselves with. But I believe that the, that gift has been given to me from God. Well, okay, you can tell me what you believe, but does it line up with Scripture? Is what I'm interested in. What Scripture teaches to stay away from mediums, uh, necromancers, spiritists. What if I sword. told you? What if I told you that King James wanted to keep them all to himself? So well, that, that wouldn't matter to me yet. because I'm did, interested did, in what Scripture did, tells me. Right. Well, and you King claim to did, be a Christian. Did, did, did King James allow or not allow what was to be printed and handed out to his sheep? Yes, that has what to do with this. That has to do with what he would want. He's not going to allow his people to read anything that could be tools and weapons to well, his advantage. He, not he, just tra he just translated the scriptures is all he did. But what I'm saying is if you claim to well, be a Christian. If he only translated the scriptures, how come there are so many scriptures still in the basements of the Vatican that are not well, in the Bible? Biff, you claim to be a Christian, all right? Now, scripture yes, I believe in Jesus completely Christ, believe in says... Christian. Okay, scripture completely and concisely and clearly states to avoid the type of people that I just mentioned. And one of them was mediums. And here you are with a medium. You're going against scripture and you're calling yourself a Christian. 
So what you're telling me is that the Bible's telling you to avoid me, but yet here you are talking to me. So you're not listening and abiding by your own Bible. No, no, no. You're you're entertaining that. You're having these people with you as you do these. No, you came on here to talk with me. So basically, you're breaking bread with me. And the Bible you don't even understand what I'm talking about. It does not say you cannot. You You cannot have a conversation with one. Your own you word, at, you just said, yeah. I should, that you should not be doing this, that, and the other. So yet yes. you're entertaining with me for an hour long. You're going yes. to indulge what the Bible's telling you not to indulge in. Yet, no, it does not say that you cannot talk to not, someone. I, I can talk I to anybody. Well too. John it says, do not even wish his gospel Godspeed. God is all loving, and he wants, and we are all God's children. Why well, would that- I, I just don't understand how a medium can call themselves a Christian because that's not what scripture uh, supports. But I'm not, I didn't say I was Christian. I said I'm spiritual. I believe Okay, well, that's fine. Biff claims to be a Christian. Well, if you check my profile, it says spiritual. Okay, well. You're not a Christian? I believe in Christ, so therefore, if you want to label me, yes, you can label me a Christian because I believe in Christ and I believe he is the, he is the Son of God. Well, so does Satan. Satan believes that too, believes that too man. No, Satan not only believes it, he knows it. Your okay. point? Well, so, yeah, your, your point is you're just trying to say, well, because I believe in Jesus. Well, Satan believes in Jesus as well. Satan's not a Christian, Biff, and neither are you. Well, I don't believe you are either. Okay. If, but if you were a Christian, you would accept everybody. No, first you off, won't. First off, would you consider what you're doing attacking me? Yes. 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 So what does the Bible? What does the, what does the Bible say about judging others and attacking them? Which do so I? with righteous judgment. With righteous. So now you consider yourself to be righteous. I'm I'm in keeping with what Scripture is talking about, you can see, and you I'm can pointing see, it out to you, and you're you're, you're completely ignoring it. Yourself to be righteous, right? I, I'm I'm enacting righteous judgment upon you. Bill. Yes, that is correct. I I, I I respect your beliefs that, that that is what you believe. Well, I don't care if you respect it or not. That doesn't matter to me. But what I'm saying Blessed is everything those, you're talking about is not in keeping with Scripture. Blessed are those. To be a Christian. Who, Blessed are those who are attacked in my name. 22 minutes. Yeah, oh, okay. But, uh, you know, I really don't have much more to say. I mean, I, I think uh, we're going north to yeah, south. That's what I needed to say. All right. Bill, you said that, that you, the King James might have modified the Bible. Right. You have, you, you've got a king that says, bring to me what words you want to put out. I will go over it. I will tell you what I will and I will not allow to go out. So I'm going to read Leviticus 19, 31 from the Torah, right, which is not in the... So this is Old, this is old, old Testament, yeah, correct? This is the Old Testament. Bit. Right. Old, old Testament is pretty much uh, the same in the uh, Torah, the Bible, and the Quran. Okay, I'm going to read Leviticus 19.31 from the Torah. And yes, the Torah is in the Old Testament. It's the first five books of Moses. This is the third book in the Bible. And this passage reads, Turn ye not unto the medians, nor the ghosts, nor unto their familiar spirits. Seek them not out to be defiled by them. I am YHWH. That's obviously not in the Bible. Right, because it's been translated into God. That's the only part of that that's missing from the Bible. Well, I guess you can translate. I am not turning to them. I turn to God. I utilize tools um, against evil. So if I can find somebody that is gifted and has the availabilities to help me to dispose of evil, I am all for it. There's good, there's bad, and there's evil. And then so, evil is uh, not good. So you would, use, you would use these evil mediums to do God's uh, you good. Might, you might, you might want to retract that. That is your opinion that they're evil. But go ahead. Why, why do you think the mediums are evil? Well, we're, just, we're going by he just agreed with the verse where God said that it was evil. 
And then he said he would use it's people who could help him in his said, works. No, no, no. Do not change the words. It said do not. What was the word that you used? Do not lean. Do okay, not. Again. Um, It wasn't worth it. Do not what? Want me to say it again? Yeah, read it again. Yeah, read it again. Hold on, I got I to upload this. I got, I got the Torah. All right. Turn ye not unto the medians or ghosts, nor unto familiar speakers. Seek them not out to be defiled by them. I am white H W A. Don't hate by hate. Right. So wow. when when I hear the word defiled, I think, well, what would defile you but evil spirits? Well, we dispose of them, and like the, I forget, I don't know whether they call them Socrates, Socrates, or whatever the heck the uh, people were when they were attacking Jesus. He says, uh, Satan would not divide his own house, disposing of his own minions. So when they try to tell Jesus that he was working, you know, for uh, for Ball, I think they try to say he was working for Ball. So how do you work with medians without being defiled by them? Um, very simple. I, um, wait, wait, person, I would never ever harm anyone, and you're saying that we're evil and I defy whatever the word is. Defile, yeah. we're, not we, evil, no, no, we, we're not saying we're evil. We, no, no, I, I'm not even sure that the Bible really happened. Well, we're, we're just we're just reading what the Bible yeah. passage says, and then I'm asking Biff a question. He says that he believes that part is in the Bible. He says that he can work with mediums. And I said, how do you work with somebody and avoid being defiled by them? All right. It's, it's, it's kind of like this. Are you ready? Okay. He's saying defiled by the person. Right. Spirit? Yeah. But, but, spirit? All right. So picture yourself on a carnival cruise. Okay. The captain, yes, of, the, I'm the captain of the ship is God. He's in control of the ship, all right? I am not even the first mate. Jesus is the first mate. I just happen to be a very blessed individual who can walk about the ship. Now, the ship is going to different ports, all right? There is no problem with bringing different people on this ship to go to different ports to do God, the captain's will, and work because God is in control of the ship He's in control of everything first and foremost. All the rest are just us as vessels, as instruments to work together to take care of what you're calling evil and stuff. My can body you, can you heal anyone that you lay hands on? What's that? Can you heal anyone and everyone that you lay hands on? God literally takes care of 99% of the people that I lay hands on. Evidently, oh. 1% have something okay. to learn. All right. Earlier, you said that. You've got enough faith. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, wait a second. It, Earlier you said you had enough will, faith. It will. All right, Biff. Earlier you said you had enough because I asked you. I said, if why can't these people just go straight to Jesus? Why? Why do they need you? And you said, well, some of them does don't have the faith like you have. And you even talked about how you were healing atheists. So in other words, uh, the people that are healed don't actually have to have faith in Jesus at all because you have enough faith for them. Well, if that is the case. Why aren't you going to hospitals tonight and walking through each and every room healing the infirm? Why aren't you doing that if they don't need even have enough faith uh, and they can allow you? Maybe you need to follow me a little closer. I was in the hospital today laying hands on really? people. So, Do so we much, have so much of Is this on the news, Biff? Where's this at? Uh, the devil controls the news, so and the, oh, and the devil okay. is definitely uh, controlling you. So, so it's not on the news then, right, Biff? Biff. On, it's, on, it's on Facebook. You can look on my Facebook page. You can see well, the photo. If you're walking through a hospital healing people left and right, surely that would make the six o'clock news, Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, etc. Well, why don't you why don't you inform them? Because I surely have many times. And I've been to the hospitals on many occasions, especially the VA hospital, because I'm a veteran there. I go in there. I can just can't camera away. with you next time. Can you take a video camera with you next time so we can witness this in real time? You were witnessing the healing in real time, and you watched five minutes of two hours Biff. with the gentleman that was in the catatonic state. So why would Biff. I waste my time on you when you're not watching any hours of video? 
Well, don't do it just for me. me do it for other people. I, I go live and you, I go live do it and you don't watch. for others that are watching, Biff. Biff, don't just do it for me. That's do it for why, others. The next time you go to a hospital, take a camera with you so we can witness. To, that's why I took my 10 minutes and I spoke to others. And I did not waste my time on you. Okay. Don't waste time with me, Biff. Just do it for them. Do it for Taylor. Do it for Gibson. Do it for Nilesh. Go to a hospital. Biff. Biff. You can't just walk through hospitals. You're not allowed to. Biff. Somebody's breaking up. I got full, I got full service. Somebody's breaking up. Biff, can you hear me? Loud and clear. I can hear you. Okay. Loud and clear. You know what the Bible says about false prophets, false miracle workers, and false healers? There are a couple of verses that the Bible says. Oh yeah, they're going to be the first, they're going to be the first ones. Uh, they're going to be the first ones with the milestones on their neck. Is that what the Bible says? Who you is know that the Bible says. You know that the Bible cautions against people uh, who come out with spiritual gifts of healing and miracles whatsoever, and it says, and it specifically states that they are false prophets who will deceive the elect. No, it says. It says Beware of them. Yes. Jesus says there will be many that come after me doing greater, greater works than I. Yeah. So, uh, do, do you, so uh, what? Uh, what? What exactly does that work? What exactly does uh, the verse say? It's one of them says, "Beware of the false prophets." That's seven fifteen. Correct. The false twenty four twenty four says, "For false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders, so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect." And about false gifts uh, of healing. Uh, uh, of, uh, uh, healing and all, right? Um, you know, um, the, the Bible also uh, talks about false uh, uh, gifts of healing. Right? And it just basically says uh, that it's essentially deceptive speech to talk about gifts that you do not have. But Jesus also again says there will be others that perform greater works and miracles than I. Do you, do you remember that part or no? Where does he say that? In the Bible. In the Bible. Why don't you just Google? Google. No, 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 no. Okay, since you've quoted it, if you could direct us to the verse, yeah. right? The exact Okay, verse. I'm going to direct you to the verse. It's in the book that's in front of you. Open it up and find it. If that takes too long, Google it. Biff, I can tell you. Biff, I want no, no, to Biff, you're the one who's I, quoting I, it. I have you're one the one who's quoting right? it from 66 books, right? So go to the exact place and quote it, because like I I can give you exactly where I've quoted from. And I expect the same from you, Biff, because when I'm just coming at Google, you with something Google, that's solid. Just Google did did Jesus say other people would perform miracles? Yes, Simply Google it. In the past, in the past yeah, was, yeah, he did, and he was warning uh, warning uh, people about uh, other people who would perform miracles. Jesus said in the Bible, I got photographic memory. I can't okay. tell you. What if you've got photographic memory, then you can give me the verse because that's what photographic memory does. The verse, baby, the verse. What's the verse? Which is the book? Be, uh, well, let's start with this yeah, I, one. Jesus. Which is the book? We, I'll look Jesus. it up myself. You don't have to quote it. Just give me. Is it Psalms whatsoever? Jesus, we whatsoever? Cast these demons out. Why could we not cast these demons out? Jesus replied. Because for those type of demons, you must fast. So those were other people casting other demons. Right, 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 right. Where, Jesus, where are you Jesus, getting this from? There are people. We found people that are casting out demons in your name. Should okay. we stop them? Jesus Biff. responded, no, do not Biff. stop them. Yeah. For they are doing works in my name. Biff. You guys Biff. need to read the book again. That, uh, You the need to read your book Passages again. that I have quoted to you are from Matthew 7.15. Matthew twenty four twenty four. Where are your uh, the Biff, where hold which on, hold on. Uh, books and the thing are, are, are your, uh, is what you're uh, quoting Biff, from? I, I actually I'm, I'm connecting Biff what Biff first said to John chapter sixteen. Is that correct? If, if, if you say so, does it say does Jesus say others will come after me, healing and doing greater things than I? He says that he must leave, therefore he'll send the comforter, for all things have not been told unto you. 
You'll send okay, so right there with that quote, all things have not been told unto you, means that things are still being done. But find the quote. Can you Google that or no? So he's talking about sending the comforter to his disciples. All right, fellas. Fellas, I promise you I stay on from 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock. I'm going to see if my uh, passenger in Google, you're going to Google just um, to say a Bible quote. Did Jesus say others would heal in his name? And then it should pop up with the book, the verse, and it should be in Jesus' words. Um, and basically that would be uh be Matthew where it says, Lord, Lord, one of the books great miracles in your name and done mighty works, and he says, I never knew you. Be gone. Speak into it. Workers of iniquity. Microphone on there. Just say did see, just text in there. Did, did Jesus say it will be others that heal in his name? Yeah. It, it also says that a perverse generation will seek signs and wonders. And that's what you're trying to accommodate. This. So the only thing that I can connect what Biff is saying to is there's one Bible verse where it says that he will, you will do greater things than I. But Matthew 24, 25, what he's saying um, comes from where it says, many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and will deceive many. That, I believe, is the one that he might uh, be talking, what's happening quoting. Here, he's taking John 16, right, where Jesus is saying, if I must leave mm -hmm. and send you the comfort for I have not taught you. And many, yeah, mm -hmm. he's, when the Holy Ghost will come and show you things greater than I have. Viv turned that into, well, he'll, there will be another guy that heals better than I do. Now he's backpedaling it. Many, many, backpedaling many, many others will come off doing greater works than I which I find hard to believe, but... You don't know that's the Holy hey. Ghost. And you're sitting here telling us you have him with you. Hey, Biff, do you believe uh, atheists and Hindus and people like that will go to heaven? That's, well, it's not up to me, but... Uh, it, it, you're, uh, it's kind of like... Something like that is not for me to, I don't have the answer for that. Why not? I, I know, I do know that one testimony of one atheist was that Biff came over to that. For those of you who know me, I'm an atheist. Biff came over to the house, laid hands on me. That's my not tumor is gone. My That's tumor is gone. The pain is gone. That's not maybe, what I asked. Maybe it's time for me to start believing. What That's not what I asked. Believe. Well, if he's a believer, then he's not an atheist, Biff. That's yeah. not what I asked. It was a she, by the way. She, whatever. What's that? James, wake up. Evil James. All right, I'm still here. Wake up. Wake up. Ask them a question. I am, uh, Your mic's muted. I'm about at my destination. I promised you from 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock. It's 6.04. I have to dispose of some demons. I go hard in the paint, yeah, homie, I'm a saint. Right or die.